is Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. I'm sitting on an energized 50 kVA transformer that's charged up with 7,600 volts. I've got a dig underneath it today with my 1,000 volt insulated shovel. I've got one fantastic story to tell you and a couple best practices. It's only getting hotter, so let's get started. What we've got going on here is 200 amp meter cabinet. We're gonna have four aught conductors, two hots and a neutral exiting here. We've got a 36 inch sweep 90. So that from here, fully set into our coupling, 36 is, is right there. That pipe is already laid in the ground. We're, we're ending up right here. And I'm just constructing where I wanna come out. That's that's not quite right. I'd like to go a little further. Be about there is what this is gonna look like. <clears throat> the scrap piece there should be this, and that'll be plenty to get me into the transformer. This is a 50 kVA transformer, 7,600 volts. 50 kVA, 7,600 volts. I'm gonna use caution. I've got this cool trenching shovel that I'm gonna be utilizing once they start getting close. Um, but we do have a really nice, clear dig path here. There's absolutely nothing in the ground at that point. Let's get to work. We have uh, safety personnel from AES, our utility company is here to supervise. Um, and so we're gonna dig this elbow into the transformer so he can close it up, lock it up, because that's, that's an energized transformer. So they can't just walk away from that, of course. So I'm gonna dig this out, put that elbow in, he's out of here. I'll finish the rest of the job on my own. Stick around to the end, because I'm gonna tell you a story that our AES man just told us. True story happened to him 38 years ago. You will not believe it. Here's what this looks like. I've got a 1,000 volt rated shovel that's been tested to 10,000 volts for doing the work near the live lines. This 7,620 volt line, that's phased to ground. So that means 14,000. What is it? 14,240 volts face to face. That's our delta here. We've got a, a knockout, <clears throat> square knockout. It's about five by five in the side of this box down here. I'm gonna stub a pipe in four inches. We're gonna shut up this transformer and then it'll be on me to continue the trench path and connect with our existing conduit. So I'm close, I'm close. I figure, give me another two hours, I'll have this wrapped up before the day gets real hot. And I'll tell you that quick story right at the end. Whew. Okay, I'm stopping, <laughs> getting tired. Uh, we're where we think the pipe should be and we haven't found it yet. So it's just more elbow grease. We've got our target. We're at the appropriate depth. This grade will get uh, built up substantially with the finished landscaping. 36 inch of cover above pipe is our goal. So I'm gonna check the company cam photos and see if I can't locate that because I'm getting tired. I mean, it's amazing how the tempo picks up when you know you're gonna succeed and you're emotionally transitioned from, what if it's not gonna make it? To, we're gonna make it. Ah, oh, there it is. Should be able to get a coupling on here. It's gonna be an outside fitting. That's it, that's what we needed. Oh. I only have the fittings to do this once. So, I think, I'm gonna cut it long, dry fit it, go from there. Cut it long, dry fit it, try again. Need a longer blade, but lo and behold, I matched it up. Milwaukee fiberglass folding rule, and I need four inches inside that knockout. I'm gonna call it 31. Start with a 31 or Okay, he's gonna work. It's just a matter of getting it fine-tuned here. Take a little bit more off the inside. Get this out of the way first. Quick set cement, it's bright blue. Look at that. I really don't know what the benefit is. I didn't expect it to be the, the blue stuff. I like having a little bit more working time, if anything. More working time rather than less. So I don't think I like that word quick. 
keep it off your clothes because it probably won't come out. If you've got a trick for getting PVC cement out of your clothing, share that with the crew. Drop it in the comments. I'm gonna put a depth marking on these so I know they're fully seated. Sometimes you just can't feel if it hits the shoulder or not, but that's what we're looking for right there. That will be an improvement. Slather this baby up. I'm a little shy of my Sharpie marks there, but three eighths of an inch ain't bad. That's plenty. And I consider that a job well done. All right, that gives me a visual gauge. Make sure I get that seated. Almost there. I get the backfill. All right, time is of the essence, just like in real estate. That's why I don't like the quick dry. So the goal is to have 36 inches of cover. We're at about 25 right now, but this grade will be built up with final landscaping. And then also to use that knockout into the transformer. You cannot drill the side of that transformer or you'll compromise the structure. And that's one of the explicit statements from AES. So we do not want to have a rejected installation. It's painful to have to do this once, let alone twice. We are done. We're cleaning up and ready to move on. We have three more stops today. It's a busy day. So our lineman friend who's here, it's Friday, 38 years ago. It's his mother-in-law's birthday. His wife is pregnant, eight months pregnant with their first child. He's hustling to get out of there and get to the party on time. He's up on a pole. He's dealing with 76.2. He's working fast, he's working hard, and he stops respecting it. He gets it in through his left arm and out through his right leg. The only thing that frees him up is he passes out and falls forward, saves his life. But before he passes out, he remembers vividly, even to this day, the lady across the street, old lady in her yard raking leaves, hears the <laughs> looks up, watches the fire ripping out of his right leg as that voltage heads for ground. His buddy, he looks over, he sees him getting out of his truck, walking around the back eyes wide looking up at the pole everybody's thinking we're watching somebody die today he falls forward the only thing that saves him from hitting the ground is his belt he's hanging there upside down swinging free of the voltage it takes him a while to get up there to start to rescue him but the sound of them climbing the pole to save him is what wakes him up and he wakes up and he's upside down swinging and they get him down, he's standing up on the ground, and he thinks to himself, well, I must have all my parts, because here I am standing up. Turns out he's got a little dime-sized hole in his right boot that's been completely blown out. He pulls his boot off, his sock is burned all the way up. His pants are burned off him, both pants all the way up to the knees. He's got third degree burns down his legs. They get him to the ER. <clears throat> he calls his wife or his wife gets called in the way, the only thing she says is, I'll meet you at the hospital. And uh, 25 days in the ER later, critical care, he walks out, skin grafts, but he doesn't have a limp today. Thankfully that damage didn't go down to his flesh, his muscular level, it was just at the skin tissue and he's alive to tell us about it and he has a healthy respect for it today. And you know what? He never thought about quitting. He said, God dang it, and went right back to it. The money's too good to stop. Here's another one. There was a root in the way on a transformer dig just like this. The line bends down to cut that root. He starts cutting, and you know what's lying right immediately up tight on the underside of that root is the primary. That primary line was undetected. He cuts right through it, and boom, massive explosion. Explosion, absolutely deafening. The lineman makes it, but a healthy respect. And here's the tip that comes from our pro who was here moments ago. Do not use a saw and do not use an ax. Use an insulated shovel and respect, respect, respect. A couple of things I want to mention to you. One is we did have 811 mark the public utilities. You can see a red flag there, green flag there, blue flag there, yellow flag, red flags out the back. Those indicate gas, sewer, electric, so we knew where everything was. In addition, our job here is done. We've got a tag in the meter base. 
if it's not expired, the utility company will have a utility subcontractor pull the cable and then the lineman on staff at the utility company, most likely, will terminate the conductors and then they'll have a metering specialist, separate truck, separate individual, plug in the meter and this baby will be live. So we're real close, real close, but our job is done. I just need to give them a call when I drive away in the truck, hands free, of course. Truck, I just call my Tesla a truck. Habits, habits. Well, it is a wrap. If you've got questions on your project, I encourage you to check the description for ePro to call. eProtocol, that's where you and I jump on a link, talk 30 minutes, hour, whatever you need to discuss your project in detail. That's it for today. Subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.